Howdy hi, every people! Eliora here with another top six list. This time inspired by a favorite channel of mine, Jay Wits. I am going to be doing a countdown of my top six favorite gym leaders. I personally love Pokemon gyms. I don't know too many people who don't. Usually the gym leaders are very interesting and very, just very interesting. I can't think of a better word. And a lot of them are very fun. So let's dive on in and see which ones I like the most. Number six. Roxy. You like music? You like clubs? Do you like to rock hard at concerts? You like poison? This gal's got it all wrapped up in one glorious punk rock package. Her gym is one of two that straight up didn't exist in the first black and white games, and her gym is actually memorable. I can't even remember the name of the other gym later. It was so much fun to head into her gym and hear the rock remix of the standard gym music. Also, I love her personality. Her dad, the sea captain that runs the ferry to get people to and from the mainland, goes off selfishly for his own reasons, and she gives him a hard time for inconveniencing people. So, what does she do? Goes back to her gym and proceeds to rock out so hard and so loud that she can't even hear any trainers who approach her because she wants to take her mind off things. A fantastic and hilarious bit of hypocrisy. Her use of poison Pokemon is fitting, given the stereotype of acid being used in clubs, and I just love her overall look and her attitude and her gym. She's so much fun. Number, Number five. Fantina. Oh man, this lady. How much fun is this woman? I mean, first of all, she's a foreigner no matter what country you're playing in, speaking broken Japanese in the Japanese version and a mix of French and broken English in the English version. This is fun in and of itself, just because it's so fun to listen to her talk. She uses ghost-type Pokémon, which is a preferred type of mine, and best of all, she is also a coordinator. You can encounter and compete against her multiple times in the contest hall, though she only appears at high levels, signifying her expertise in both contests and battle. Overall, Fantina is a fantastic gym leader. Number 4 Valerie Now, as soon as fairy-type Pokémon were announced, I knew there was going to be a fairy-type gym. What I didn't know was how incredible it was going to be. Valerie's gym is constructed to look like a giant dollhouse, full of teleporters and strewn with kimono girls. Everything about it screams delicacy with hidden strength, much like its gym leader. Valerie, who may just be the single most adorable trainer ever with her huge doll-like eyes and sweet smile, is not only a master of the newly discovered type, but is also a clothing designer, having made the kimono she wears herself in order to be closer to her Pokemon, and is a fashion model, much like Elisa of Generation 5. It's a shame we don't get to see much of her outside of the gym in the Battle Chateau, but regardless, her awesome gym, fantastic fashion, and mastery of my personal favorite Pokemon type is still awesome. Number 3 Blue Okay. This dude is just freaking awesome, period. In the very first games and their remakes, Blue is your rival and manages to stay two steps ahead of you the entire journey, getting gym badges before you no matter how quickly you get to a town, always having a powerful team that you have to do some serious grinding to keep up with, and beating you to the Elite Four and becoming the champion, becoming your final obstacle. Finally laying the smackdown on him is always so satisfying. And as a side note, this is the only completely unique battle music in the entire game. In the second games in their remakes, Blue has apparently learned some humility, as he does not talk down to you when you challenge him. However, he remains slightly arrogant and prideful, requiring you to find him at Cinnabar Island first, and then in the remakes refusing to battle you outright until you get the other seven gym badges in the region. He's the only gym leader in existence to have a type diversive team, and he's the only gym leader who you cannot get his number from directly to rebattle him in the fighting dojo in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. You have to go to his sister seven times before you can get it. Stubborn, prideful, and powerful. This is one 
cool blue dude. Number two. Charon. Speaking of former rivals, Charon is just freaking amazing. In the first black and white games, he is the rival who has strong confidence in his knowledge of Pokemon and in keeping with the game theme of truth versus ideals, he stands for ideals, most specifically the ideal of strength. He helps you a lot in dealing with Team Plasma and his knowledge actually proves useful during the journey. In the second games, he starts a new normal type gym in your starting town, the only game to have a gym in your hometown, and you in fact become his very first gym opponent, which makes it a learning experience for the both of you. In addition, he gives a lot of help throughout the game afterwards, much like in the first game, showing up multiple times, giving advice about the ice situation in Opelucid City, and you even get a one-time battle with him if you memory link from the original black and white game with his team determinant on your starter in those games. Smart, strong, confident, and helpful, Charon owns his role as a gym leader and as an overall powerful trainer through two different games. Number one, Morty. Oh yeah, this guy. Morty has to be the coolest and most interesting gym leader of all time. First of all, he uses ghost Pokemon. I already mentioned that I really like ghost Pokemon, so he already gets points in my book. His gym is just plain insane, requiring a walk of faith over a dark pit on an invisible floor, the path hinted at by the various channelers' line of sight. And in Heart Gold Soul Silver, this is made even more challenging with the channelers' candles going out upon defeat, hindering your field of vision. Outside of the gym, Morty continues to be awesome. First encountered in-game in the Burned Tower with E-Sign, Morty spends his free time studying Pokemon mythology. He searches for Entei, Raikou, and Suicune, and he can be found on Mondays and Tuesdays on the Belchime Trail where you must pass to get to Ho-Oh. Cloaked in mysterious knowledge, shadows, and spirits, Morty is just an insanely awesome trainer and my personal favorite gym leader of all time. Gym leaders are amazing and fascinating, usually surrounded by interesting stories and fun gyms. The only thing that could possibly make it better is a dark type gym. Why Pokemon? Why isn't there a dark type gym? We've had four rock gyms, five electric gyms, two bug gyms, and a fairy gym the second it debuted, but no dark type gym! Anyways, I shall see y'all in my next video. Bye bye. And if you like this content, consider supporting me on Patreon. <laughs>